Okay, well, as you guys know, our last speaker is Jason Rubin. He's the president and co-founder of Naughty Pog. Uh, believe it or not, he's been developing games for 19 years, which is kind of hard to believe since you're, what, 25? Oh, 34, I'm sorry. And uh, Naughty Dog has created two of the best known franchises on, uh, in video games. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, of course, everybody knows, and more recently, Jack and Daxter. Um, Naughty Dog's games have sold a staggering 30 million copies, and that actually doesn't even include Way of the Warrior sales, which I think were, yeah, 2 million. Um, no, Jason, I've known Jason for a long time. He's a guy for whom I have a lot of respect and I'm definitely proud to call a friend. Uh, Jason? Uh, this is going to be a very interesting speech. This is something that's been brewing in my mind since E3 last year. Uh, before I start, it's obviously an odd topic and an odd start. I want to say two things. First of all, I don't know Tara Reid, and I have nothing against her personally. Uh, I'm going to use her as, as an example of, uh, of a greater group of people. But in all honesty, if Tara Reid's in the audience, please don't rush the stage, because I do have nothing against you. The second thing is I'm taking the AIS at its charter, and its charter is to elevate the art. So if I offend you in what I'm about to say, and this will be a pretty harsh speech, then understand that I am doing what I believe this conference should be, which is trying to elevate the art of making video games. Uh, one of the questions in, at the end of the last session I heard, uh, the person asking said that we have not reached the level of entertainment of Hollywood. And that is exactly why I'm here, because I believe that that is a very dangerous statement. And I don't think it's true, first of all, if you look at somebody who plays a game for 20 hours, it's 20 hours of entertainment. We're selling a lot of those, the number of hours played in games. And I'd like to see this art form become an art form. I was actually called by the LA Times and asked, is video games an art form? That's how far we have to go. Is video games even an art form? So this started brewing in my mind at E3 last year. Sony threw a bunch of parties. One of the parties they threw was at the Viceroy, and it was for celebrities only. I was asked uh, by a local high school tennis coach whether I was going. Uh, he had gotten an invite through the promoter who he knew it's a Hollywood thing. He was one of the quote unquote celebrities. Uh, whether I was going, he's a good friend of mine. And I said, well, the Sony party uh, on Thursday? No, 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 this is the Wednesday and Friday one. And I, I thought, gee, that's kind of odd. You know, I work for this publisher. I've, I've sold one in eight titles, uh, or one in eight of their titles has been something I worked on. And I don't know about it. And it's at E3, which is a developer uh, period. I did end up getting invited the day before. I was told that I should feel lucky. Uh, I was asked to stand in line to get my invite because I hadn't been thought of before that. Uh, I went through a metal detector. Tari did not. And that got me thinking. That got me thinking. So I talked this year to a lot of people, publicists. My brother works for entertainment tonight. He sees this from the other side. He walks the lines that they're walking back and forth on. You're going to see a lot of backgrounds with a lot of logos. He's the guy on the line, so I know him personally now for 30 years. Uh, spoke to him, spoke to celebrities, I know a few. Uh, spoke to people in the industry, spoke to developers. And this is what I realized in that year of thought. We're at a turning point right now, and the question is, what is the game developer's place? This is a joysticks poster for 1983, a terrible movie. But are we going to be the guy in the box? Or are we going to be the guy out of the box? And that decision is going to come in the next few years. First of all, uh, this is not a talk about parties, but I will use that to show a greater problem. There are four points I want to get across. The first is that video games are currently sold like package goods. I will explain that. Talent is not respected. The second thing is video games are a talent business. We are a talent business, not a, ta a package good business. Product development is the talent. And I say product development because that includes people that work at publishing houses. So when I say publisher, I generally don't mean the people working on product at publishers. So if you're a developer at EA, that doesn't mean you're part of the publisher. To me, there's a division that's happening here, and I'll explain that more. Uh, the other thing is, if the business doesn't change, talent suffers. And bottom line, I think the whole business suffers. I think that's a weaker argument, but I do believe it to be true. And the last thing is that talent has to force the change. Talent has to rise up. This is a revolutionary speech for me. I, I've come to, to a certain extent, the end of my limit on uh, the respect that the developer gets from certain segments of the industry. Uh, the fist is not a mistake in these slides. All right, first, video games are currently sold like packaged goods. Talent is not respected. What are packaged goods? Packaged goods are very familiar to you. I have a list of some of them here. 
the important thing is that the package is more important than the good. The difference between a Prada purse and a $5 sack that you can buy at Whole Oats is not how well it carries things. It's the attachment you have to the purse through celebrity, through marketing. Marketing makes that purse valuable. Its actual use is no better or worse. The same is true of vodka. They basically taste the same. Certainly smart water is not de terribly different from Evian. Blind taste test, how many of you can pick the difference? It's the attachment and the marketing that makes those brands special. Clorox bleach is chemically identical to regular bleach, yet you'll go spend more on Clorox. That is a packaged goods business. It is a very viable, realistic, true way of marketing something if it's a packaged good. Branding is far more important than content. In those, in those industries. In fact, often they're selling something you don't even really need. Uh, an attachment is extremely important. That's why they trot out celebrities. That's why they place it in movies. That's why they get their name out there as much as they can to get it in your head so when you see that brand on the shelf, you pull it off. Market share changes over years in this industry. A 3% increase in Coke over Pepsi is gargantuan. A huge coup for Coca-Cola. Our industry is not like that. Our industry follows the talent model a lot more, and I've listed a couple talent agents, uh, talent uh, publishers at the top here. The quality of the content that they sell is what makes you go buy what they're selling. It's not so important if it's a Marvel comic. It's who wrote it, who drew it, what's the character, who's in it, the content, right? Universal Studios spends no effort with the idea that Universal Studios makes the best movies, because it's crap. They make everything from crap to cream. So does TriStar, so does everybody else. And they realize that the way to sell to you is to say, you're going to like what's in it, you're going to like who's in it, and you're going to like who did it. And that's the difference between those two brands. It's selling what's in it and selling the aura of it. Effort is spent in those industries, therefore, publicizing the talent. And this is what's not happening in our industry right now, which brings me to Tara Reid. Tara Reid apparently is a future game developer, best I can tell because Sony Computer Entertainment and everybody else in the industry is spending a lot of effort courting her. So the question is, why? Well, here's Tara Reid broken down into five bullets, the best I can do. She's very cute. She loves to party. I've actually been at parties with her. She's a great party, better than me by far, no doubt. You want to party her? Go for Tara. When she's not partying, she takes time to act. She may be good, she may be bad, but she definitely acts. She's a big celebrity. There's no doubt that. People recognize her face, they don't recognize my face. Uh, in 2003, SCA threw four parties for her and her friends at the Hamptons. PS2 second anniversary, which, I don't know, I sold a lot of games, I didn't even know it existed until afterwards. Sundance, things like that. We got one catch-all party at E3. Thousands of people were invited to that party, and yet a lot of developers sitting in the audience right now called me for invites. And I kind of felt lucky to get an invite. There were a lot of junior PR and legal people there. Apparently they're more important than the developer. For Sony Computer Entertainment, I don't get it. What they should be doing is they should be saying, Lauren Lanning makes great games for Xbox. We should get him at every event we do. Not because he's going to make games for us, but just to remind him we exist. There are a lot of other people out there that don't work on games for Sony. They should be courting those people. That's what Hollywood does. And it makes sense for Hollywood to do it. Why doesn't it make sense for us to do it? Hollywood can't get away with disrespecting their talent like that. They simply can't do it. If Steven Spielberg calls up for a premiere, he had nothing to do with her, actually. This person's person calls up. So Mr. Spielberg would like to attend. Absolutely. How many people would he like to bring? But that's how Hollywood acts. Why? Why do they understand that talent has that value? Working on a Spielberg movie will make Universal Studios have a better year than not, on average. Why don't we get that? Where is the value? Is it me? One in eight units of Sony Computer Entertainment's lifetime software I worked on? Ted Price, president of Insomniac Games, he's generated more revenue for SCA than any independent company. Alex Soropi, I mean, come on, he works on great Xbox games. Wouldn't you love to have him working on PS2? It doesn't have to be a Sony person. Wouldn't you love to have him, you know, at your parties, involved with you, meet him, greet him, try to slowly get him to work with you? Ray and Greg, massive developers. Dave Perry, who's actually working with Hollywood. So if you got a Woody for Hollywood, bring Dave in. Dave's actually doing stuff that's good for the industry with Hollywood. He's actually getting Hollywood and the game industry to go together. Or is it Tara Reid? Is it having her stand in front of your logo? And for the sake of argument here, having her say, I love the PlayStation, on two or three television shows, which is great free advertising. It comes with a celebrity backing. I'm assuming all that's gonna happen. Well, it's obvious what Sony thinks. <laughs> Two 
two different colored backgrounds. These photos are from two different parties. <laughs> EA loves her. Nintendo loves her. The whole fucking world loves her. What are they getting? Everybody wants to do this. I think she, she didn't make the Xbox party. And you know, this picture kind of got me. Paris Hilton, uh, star of our favorite video. She's got an Xbox box, right? How many games do you think are in there? How many developers in this room have had a hard time getting enough games to give out to their development staff? They probably had 500 people at this party, they each got three games. What? It doesn't make any sense. Th this one, this one kills me, the next one. This is the true crime premiere. Now, I actually went to this. Technically, I believe it was the soundtrack premiere. But, come on. Without the game, you don't have a soundtrack. This is the best celebrity photo I could get. Mark Wahlberg was there, I was there, I snuck in with some press people, not that I was invited, but Bright Riley is what they got standing in front of the box. She's happy, she's there. Uh, executive producer of the soundtrack. They invited the development team. This one is extra bad because it's actually for the game, not just the brand. The day before, five invites. You can come if you want. Red card. That one's worse than all the others. I can't take that. Red card. Total red card for Activision. All right. This isn't effective. All right. Tara Reid's place is in a game. I am not anti-Hollywood. I am not anti-celebrity. I love that shit. I want to bring Hollywood into our games. Tara Reid will help sell games. And sometime in the future, if she doesn't find out about this talk, I might work with her. <laughs> but if you give her free booze, you're going to watch her pass out. She did that two weeks ago at one of these parties, by the way. It got carried out on someone's shoulder. Introduce her to the talent. You might get her inspired. And if you get her inspired, you'll get it in there. And that street credibility from her talking about it and the, and the plug she does on TV will come out a lot more naturally. See Rise to Honor. Jet Li may not be the best celebrity in the world, but that's the right thing to do. And that's the PD department. That's PD getting involved with celebrity. And hey, it's Sony. They're only, the same company gets it and doesn't get it at the same time. We need more of that. The tragedy here is that instead of strengthening the industry by promoting our talent and getting our talent mixed with Hollywood talent, we're weakening it by making us look like a vodka industry. I talk to celebrities. I live in Hollywood. They have a thousand of these parties all the time. It's a market of identical product. They know this. They, need, they know that Hollywood needs them. And this is a direct quote. Everybody at the party is a bunch of fawning suck-ups. That's a quote from a celebrity who goes to these parties. They're not interested in PR people. They know why PR people are there. PR people are there for a specific purpose, to get something from them. Talent speaks to them. It's very different. When somebody stands in front of them that, has, that does an art, and they're, they're interested in games, they say, this person does something interesting. This person's like me. That's how to get them involved in the industry. A stark contrast in the attention is just a surface blemish. This is not a talk about parties. But the cancer underneath is shown by the treatment at these surface very, very, you know, it's petty, lack of invite parties. There are a million ways in which we're disrespected. Uh, some of my favorite, trying to take developer logos off the box. I and mean, what is that? The idea that a publisher logo long term can mean something is crap. Universal Studios makes crap and cream. I said that. The same is true of EA and Sony and Activision. And that's the correct thing for a publisher to do. The idea that something like EA Big means something to, to when you make so many games from so many different developers, I'm sorry, it's not going to get bought by, your, by the people out there. It's just that's not the way that you sell games. It, it's so endemic. When we started working uh, 10 years, 20 years ago in the video game industry, we were a bunch of kids from the basement. We had no talent creating logos and stuff. We worked with pixels. So it made sense for the PR departments to design our logos. I'm hiring you know, million dollar a year guys now from design firms. I'm hiring guys that are unbelievable artists from Disney and elsewhere. And yet they don't even let them look at the logo. Because the idea is the developer could never work on that. That's not something the developer knows. That's not something the developer can do. How can they do the box? We're an industry that spends millions of dollars on advertising and has some of the, I'm sorry, worst advertising of any industry. They take talent that they have around them that's free and the PR and marketing department step back and they go and find cheaper consulting work to do that. And it's because they honestly don't get it. They don't understand the talent that they're working with. Video games are a talent business. This is very important. Product development is the talent, not the PR and marketing departments. The question is who should be in charge. And this is why we have this problem. 
The reason that PR and marketing departments are so important in industries that are packaged goods is because they're the talent. They really are. If Evian does better one year, it's because their PR people and their marketing, they're doing a better job. Publicity's, they're lining, lining up the better people. They are making the brand work. They should be in charge in those industries. And it's obvious why in our industry, the PR and marketing department try to separate themselves out and they try to go directly to celebrities in Hollywood. It keeps them in charge. It keeps the power with them. It makes absolute sense. So that's why even when I call up, because a friend of mine who, who is a big list celebrity says, I want to be in that, in that party, can you help me? And I call the PR department, the PR department goes, I'm sorry, we're not adding anyone to the list. I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for a celebrity you want, but that's my celebrity. And if my celebrity goes to the party, he's already attached to me. The power shifts. They want the power. Went the wrong way. PR and marketing departments in our industry are not the power. I'm going to make this very quick. Two claims take off. One has the entire PR and marketing department in the industry in it. Another one has the entire product development. <laughs> PR and marketing department goes down. Gains get on the shelf a few months late. We might actually improve the quality of the PR and marketing. <laughs> that was me. That's not true. But it would happen pretty quickly. It would happen pretty quickly because PR and marketing people are trained. They come from the toy industry. They come from other industries. They're, they're marketing stuff. That's what they do. And they're good at it a lot of the time. But they're also a lot of them. And they can sell one thing. They can sell other things. They move around all the time. The development plan goes down. Top 300 people in our industry. Let's just take it like that. Think of the damage. A thousand people in our industry go down. I think it's a decade before we get good games again. Because it's not written down anywhere. It's still not trained in schools that well. The stuff that's in our heads is invaluable. And that's the difference. Water is water. The water guy dies, you get a new water guy. That's why the PR is so important in that industry. The brand, the, the shit doesn't change for decades. Right? It's not like that in our industry. They're not the talent. And that gives us power. If the business doesn't change, talent suffers. Okay, this is important. Why does it matter if I don't get invited to a party? Why does it matter if my name's not on the box? Why does all of this matter? I'm an economics major, that's what I did. It's all inefficient, the way we run things. As long as the publishers can blur who's responsible for the success of our products, it's impossible to assess the true value of the contributors. And what that basically does is, it keeps the idea that brand matters going. Because nobody knows who actually does any game. It's not publicized very well. So when they say our brand matters, our games sell well, you can't really pick it apart. The same is true team versus team. There are bad teams, bad development teams, and good development teams. And in a competitive market with everybody's name out front and everybody screaming, I did it, yes, the bad teams are going to fall away and the good teams are going to rise. But I think that's fair, and I also think that's healthier, not only for developers, because the ones that fall away send their talented people that for whatever reason didn't gel back into the industry, but it's also good for the publishers because they get better product. And it, it prevents the talented from pushing the financial envelope upward. That's the bottom line, it hurts us because nobody knows who we are. So when we go into a new publisher, they don't get it. They don't know where the value is. It's very confusing. You got a 20 person company and one person leaves. Is that company still intact? Publishers, this is a nightmare for them. They can't figure it out. I wanna know who those 20 people are, or I at least wanna know who the six most important are in that company. Then I know if one of them left, that I say, how's your art direction gonna happen? How's this going to happen? The guy's gone. I want to know who's in those companies. Individual versus individual. We've hid behind this egalitarian team idea too long. It's hurting us, guys. People Magazine doesn't want to interview Naughty Dog. They want to interview a person. You have to put your face out there. Because if you don't put your face out there, there's nobody to talk to. My team has an incredible amount of, of continuation in the staff. We don't lose many people. I am one of the most vocal, Face camera type guy, you know, just get my face out there, guys in the industry. But they know when I do well, when I go to France and they say, oh, this is a Jason Rubin game, and they do know me as Jason Rubin in France because Sony Europe's a little more, more enlightened, that that sells units. Selling units makes money. Making money means I can pay them more. And the bottom line is 5,000 people work on a Spielberg movie. Spielberg is not wholly responsible. He's got great cinematographers, great musicians, but when Spielberg does better and they work with him next time, it helps them. So we're inefficient in the way that we're spreading out talent from lack of talent. And it also gives publishers a false sense of security at the negotiating table. Sure, they have the fear because they never know what they're getting, but we also can't prove what we've done. It's very, very difficult for us to prove our value because they're suppressing us from 
getting our value out there. It really, it's really making this an inefficient system. And it's not only our industry, it's outside our industry as well. Gamers are getting ripped off by inexplicable broken brand promises. If you don't tell them that Crash Bandicoot was done and created by Naughty Dog, and you don't put that out there, when the brand changes, they're caught blindsided. Maybe the game gets better. Maybe the game gets worse. Aliens 2 might have been better. But the fact that you knew who the director was made it ex you understood. When Steven Spielberg doesn't direct Jurassic Park 3, you understand that that's going to change things. So you're not, if you go and you see it, and it sucks, and the other two are good, just an example, I don't know if that's the case, you understand it. You say, it's not a broken brand promise. I knew this going in because they told me that the, the person isn't working on it. So it's really not fair to our audience, which makes them gun shy, because things go, like all of a sudden, the great, great product all of a sudden goes in the dumpster because some guy left the team. And we're wasting our, a very, very valuable resource. They, they're out there and they're looking for us to get in front of the camera. We're interesting to them right now. We are very interesting to them right now. MTV called me and they wanted to do a show on a day in my life. And I said, that'd be the most boring show you did. I said, why would you want to do that? And they said, we did a survey and of our viewers, the number one job they wanted to have was a game developer. People want to know. That's MTV, not Rockstar, game developer. People want to know about us, but since we don't get ourselves out there, since we don't have publicists, since getting a publicist is seen as a counter to the marketing of the product, we're wasting that valuable resource. And the lack of respect we get within our industry translates to our respect in the future. It is bizarre to me when a friend of mine who gets invited to a Sony Computer Entertainment party who works in Hollywood as a director calls me up and says, yeah, I'll see you there. And I go, no, you won't. He goes, hmm, this guy must not really have that much value. And that's hurting me in the future, guys, because I'm working with Hollywood in the future. And Hollywood matters. They are coming. They are talented. They are very, very talented and very, very useful to us in reaching a broader audience. And the place our hundred top guys fit in vis-a-vis -vis their guys is going to determine how everybody does in the future. If all of the directors get their name on the box and they come in and they say any developer is even, you obviously believe that in your industry, nobody's talking about your developers, we'll take any one of them, their slice of the pie is going to be bigger. And that means the programmers get less, the artists get less, the girl at the front desk or the guy that's getting coffee gets less. We have to make sure we mesh and not fall in under. And the way we're being put forth right now, throwing parties for them and not inviting our own people makes us look like beneath them. And that's not a good attitude, it's not correct, it's very dangerous. So does it really matter? I mean, does it really matter if we got our name on the box? Well, Kojima did. Kojima was also Newsweek's trendsetter, opinion maker, and People to Watch 2002. And if you really don't think that there's a connection there, you're missing the point. Kojima is branded. They go out and they push Kojima as the talent. Of course he didn't program everything. Of course he didn't do all the art. But that helps Kojima. He's not a better game designer than a lot of people in this room. But Kojima's name is out there, and that gives him that visibility. And Newsweek picked up on it. And Miyamoto has the same situation. They push him, and people listen. Miyamoto's being outsold by a lot of American developers right now. A lot of them. But people still look to Miyamoto because he's the only name they got. They know the industry's big, but he's the only one offered up to them. And isn't it interesting? That is the Japanese companies that didn't grow up reading Us Magazine, didn't have crushes on George Clooney, or didn't want to play in the NFL, that are putting these people forward. Their games aren't better, guys. They just got a better attitude over there. Talent has to force the change. This is very, very important. The simple truth is that publishers, and when I say publisher, I really mean the non-product development groups. And even, really I'm talking about people who work on product versus people that don't work on product. The people that don't work on product have no reason to change the system because it is currently to their advantage. The longer that publishers can say, it's our brand that matters and not your talent, the less they have to pay for us. It may be true, it may not be true, but the longer we sit there and let them say that, the longer we get paid less. And the pie does get sliced. So we have to force the change. And since I said, if the plane goes down, we're gone, there's no gains, we do have the end power. What is our place? Well, we are not in front of the camera. Believe me, I, the easiest thing to say is this guy wants to be Tara Reid. I don't. I don't want to be a woman and I don't want to be in front of the camera. Okay, those two things need to be made clear. We're not celebrities. We're never going to be. When we walk that line with the PS2 logo behind us, 
we won't get our picture taken for a long time, and that's understood. We're not going to influence anybody on packaged goods products, so we're not going to get invited to Smirnoff parties. We're weird, we dress funny, we aren't good in interviews. You guys know this, we're geeks. So are these guys. Okay. Okay, I tricked you. The guy in the bottom corner is not actually a director. He's a developer. But good God, he could be a director. Look at him. He's only a painting. You know these guys' names. And the reason you know these guys' names is because they have their own publicists and because their industry understands that they're valued and because they have gotten themselves out there. And if you don't think that getting yourself out there gets you more, more of everything, then you've got, you got your head in the sand. A lot of developers I talked to in the last year about this topic say, yeah, I don't really like parties. That's not the point. An invite doesn't cost you anything. And they say, well, you know, our name's on the box, but I really don't want to split my team up because I might lose guys. Well, yeah, you might. And if you do, that probably meant that you didn't do well enough to keep them. I'll put every one of my employees, I'll tell you what every one of them does, try to get them. They're happy. That's the bottom line. We've got to accept the fact that this is going to be a riskier industry in the, in the future, and we've got to accept the fact that we are going to need to take more of the Hollywood model. We are not an industry on an island. We like to think that, but we're not. Hollywood Studios used to manage those guys in the same way that we're being managed, managed by publishers. Seven of them formed the United Seven, which became United Artists. Hollywood Studios don't treat them like that today. And it took talent to change that paradigm. It didn't take the publishers realizing that we do better. And you know what? The movies got better because they started collaborating with each other studio to studio like they never could before. And in the end, I've heard, I've read, studios ended up doing better. It's a new way of thinking. Back when I first started working with EA in 1987, maybe 88, uh, we found out about the affiliate label program. And we got a hold of it because it made complete sense to me. I make product. I was making bad product at that time, but I made product nonetheless. You guys don't even know these games, they're so bad. The way I looked at it, I was an artist and I was making product. And I was hiring EA to put that product on the shelf. So I wanted to know what each piece of what I was doing cost. Because if I could break it out, maybe there were things I could do that I didn't have to pay them to do. Think of this attitude, right? I'm a 17 year old kid at that point, and I'm thinking that I'm paying EA to put it on the shelf. And I looked at it and it didn't make sense because it was two people in the company and we couldn't do that much. So in the end, we ended up becoming a developer for them. But that attitude stuck with me throughout my entire career. And that's why, even though my relationship with Sony Computer Entertainment Product Development has been as good as any relationship could ever be with any publisher and developer, I still put a million and a half of my own dollars into Crash Team Racing and four million of my own dollars into Jack and Daxter. They would have given me the money. They knew the game was going to be good. But I looked at cost of capital. And $4 million into Jack and Daxter, we had something running. And when you have something running, the risk to the publisher is a lot less. And they looked at the product, and they could make a decision whether they liked it or not. I believed in myself. I believed in my team. And we put together a good product. And we did better because we didn't have to borrow money to make our game at the same high rate. See, it's a different way of thinking, isn't it? We're making the games. They're selling them. And if their PR department, which I then hire, and this is my attitude, doesn't want to push me, then I'm not getting my money's worth. And I don't like that, and I'm not going to put up with that. It's a totally different way of thinking, isn't it? But that's Hollywood's way of thinking. We're the talent. We're the limited factor. More money's going to come into this industry from Hollywood. More money's going to come in from elsewhere. We're now a big enough industry that's worth investing in us. The economy of scale is there. I've gotten offers this year to make my next games if I choose to leave Sony, with people that will fund me outside of the publishing industry, and the cost of capital will be less. We will have opportunities. We have to look at this in the future as this is a talent industry, and publishers have a valuable reason to be there. But the bottom line is, we are the reason the industry is here. I'm sorry to every publisher out there, but that is the truth. In 1983, arcade developers, this is before my time, 13 years old when this happened, demanded their name on the title screen. Can you imagine? Demanded their, that their names actually show up somewhere and that they get this novel thing called royalties. And I've talked to a couple of those guys. They got 50 reasons why they couldn't have their name on the front of the game. One of them was it was too expensive. They actually got that. It's pixels. 
you're free. <laughs> the logic isn't always there, but the reason they didn't want their names on there was clear. And this was said to them. What happens when you guys get noticed? Someone might take you from us. Yeah, that's right. That's what talent is. You know what? They stuck together, they had huge battles, and they got both. And we owe it to them that we even have this stuff happening in us now. And it's time for us to get together, and it's time for us to start thinking as a unit and looking to get involved in this. So what can we do? First thing we can do is we can believe in our value. And honestly, talking to developers over the last year, this is the biggest crisis. I don't believe, as I'm standing here, that I am a better developer than most of this industry. But I do believe I have some talents. One is, I believe in myself. Anyone who's known me will tell you that. I have an ego. Yes, that's what keeps me alive. And if any Hollywood guy gets to the top without an ego, I'd like to meet him. That's the way it works. I don't mind my face on the camera. That's right, Dave Perry introduced me to that. He was a visionary. And I saw the way he was doing things, and I said, yeah, Dave, that's right. Get your face out there. That gives you some value, specifically you. I had, that, I had that sense that I have the value, and I stand here today and have that sense I have the value. And a lot of developers say, oh man, it's, it's hard, and it is hard, it's really hard, but you have to believe if you're good, you have what they want. And if there's anything you can take away from this talk, it's that at every turn, I believed in my value, and Naughty Dog has not sold more than a lot of developers, in fact, but we've made more money because we always had the attitude that if we're not getting paid for it, we're not gonna do it. We walked away from Universal Studios when we were making millions of dollars a game because there was more on the table. We believed in ourselves. We believed we could start over with a new product. Believe in yourself. If you're good, it'll work out for you. If you're not, come work for somebody else. It'll work out for all of us in the end. The second thing we have to do is we have to get real about the business. This is the biggest tragedy, I think, for us, is that we really do have our head in the sands. I mean, I didn't get invited to my own premiere, it doesn't really bother me, it's not gonna hurt me, I'm okay, I like making games. That's fine, but that actually is not going to get you by in the future, because that model is dying. If you don't have the attitude, you don't stand up and fight for your rights, you're gonna get squashed, because we're unfortunately moving in with sharks. And I like the sharks, by the way, the Hollywood sharks, but that's the way our business is gonna have to be run, and you're gonna have to struggle. And the struggle's not just gonna be on your keyboard not just going to be with your mouse. The struggle is going to be with the world, to get yourself out there and to proclaim your value. Very, very important. You have to get real about this. It's not necessarily whether you go to a party or whether or not this or that or the other minor thing happens. It's the fact that they understand your value is there. That's what's the bottom line. We also have to unite as a community. It kills me when I hear people say that they won't come to DICE because it's $800, and they don't know what they're gonna get out of it. One piece of information, think about that. It may not be my talk, maybe this is all crap. One other person stands on this stage and gives you good information, one piece of information, $800 is the cheapest piece of good information you'll ever get, man. And you get it at no cost to you, besides that $800. We have to start getting together. We have to start thinking of ourselves as a community. Everybody knows what Mel Gibson makes every movie. I know what he makes. I'm not even in that industry. And the reason is that he knows if that gets out there, and the agents know if that gets out there, it helps everybody else in that industry. And the information as it flows helps them all. When Mel goes 20 to 25, the 15s go to 20, the 10s go to 15, the 5s go to 10, everybody moves up. If nobody knows what Mel's making, nobody knows what to ask. If one of us in this room fought hard and got our name on the front of the box bigger than average, I want to know that. Because then I can go into that same publisher and say, you've done it once, but we don't share information. The other thing we don't do is we don't get help. We're all the smartest kids in our class. That's how we got into this industry. And we have this belief that because I'm the smartest kid in the class, I should be able to do everything. Well, I negotiate maybe once every two years, and I actually think I'm okay at it. But the problem is we're getting in a bigger pool now, and more and more professional people we're dealing with who have done this 20 times a year, and when you sit down across the table negotiating with somebody who's done it 20 times a year, I don't care how smart you are, there's a reality there. Agents are an opportunity for us. If an agent has 25 clients, whether or not you're under NDA, the agent knows what all 25 clients are, have got going on. And that agent is in the business of helping. 
There are lawyers, there are other people out there that you can get that can help you. We have to stop thinking we're the smartest kid in class because we're the best damn game makers in class. But there's some people out there who have spent the last 10, 15 years of their life doing nothing but negotiating. And when a, an agent goes into a publisher and he says, you know, on behalf of my client, I have to say, uh, we're going to have to get our names on the back of the box. Uh, you can't say it doesn't fit because we're in the same DVD as the uh, movies are. And uh, you're going to do it for the director that's working on this thing. So why can't you do it for my clients? They say, I'm sorry, we can't do it. Say, you know, I represent 40 people, 40 of the best developers in the industry. And my people get their name on the box because that builds value for me as an agent. And my people are going to get that value somewhere, and some publisher is going to let us do it because they realize the talent that's involved in those 40 people. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine, but you're not going to work with any of my clients because my clients understand they're the best, they have value, and they need to get that out there. And we need to get help with that. And this, uh, I wanted to close this with a personal note. I want to say again, I do not believe that I am the best developer in the industry. I don't believe that for a moment, but I have been incredibly successful. Not the most successful, but incredibly successful. I don't need a lot of this. I can go out there and I can fight for myself because I'm pretty damn good at it. And I am going to get help. And I am going to do all the things that I've been saying. But I really don't need it because I could walk away and I could go do something in another industry because I've made a lot of money and I don't need the money anymore. What I'd like to do is help somebody who doesn't have that status. Because I feel that the 20 years I've thrown into this art, the art's also thrown a lot back at me. I've got a lot of help from a lot of people along the way. So the fact is, I can stand up here and say what I'm saying, and it can't hurt me. Because I can get money elsewhere, and make my games elsewhere, and if I bring it to the publisher, they're going to publish it if it makes sense for their bottom line. But there aren't that many people that have that situation. I want to help those people. I really want to help those people. I think that we need to get together, Game Directors Guild, something like that, to make sure that the people that need information and need help can get together. I really want to, and the reason I'm doing this, is to give back to the industry that's made my life successful. And I wanted just to say that at the end. Um, again, the manifesto. I thought this was going to take a little longer, so I actually have 10 minutes. I'm going to go against my conscience and open it up to questions. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's against my better judgment. One of the things that pop has been happening, I was going to hear over uh, the last couple of days, the independent developers going away. So that leaves you with a bunch of people that are technically employees of the companies. So what are you really proposing? How do you make that change? First of all, I'm not sure the independent developer is going away. Uh, now you're getting into, uh, you're asking me an, an opinion that I've been mulling over, but I'm not really prepared to speak about. But it's possible that the idea of building a team internally is also going to go away. Uh, I think middleware is coming. I gave a speech last year that I didn't think video game graphics were going to be the driving force in sales of games. I look at Grand Theft Auto and say, why am I spending so much on my engine if I'm getting a lot, uh, or getting nothing out of it? and Grand Theft Auto can make better content and sell better games. I think the content's going to matter. And if everybody's working on a few pieces of middleware, then that whole technological barrier that we've all been working with for so long kind of goes away. Because I can hire a RenderMan guy from any other RenderMan studio, and he'll pop right into a chair and start working right away. And then his talents can matter more, her talents can matter more. But it's not necessarily going to prevent me from hiring them. And as soon as I can hire them that easily, well, I'm spending, in my company, close to a million and a quarter at the end of every game between vacation days and downtime, getting nothing on the disc for it. So then I start up and I got some artists sitting around not doing anything because the designers haven't created the levels. Well, if I can ramp up easily, I can ramp down easily. And as that starts to happen, the question is, is the internal studio really still make sense? No. That's just a thought. So just because you're employed by a company doesn't mean that that's necessarily long term. Another way of looking at it is, if you're employed by a company, and the company is not giving you your full value, why are you working for that company? There is still a business model of being independent. And if being independent means, in the end, that you're going to do better, why is it that we're all working internally? I mean, I'm still asking for the things that I'm talking about up here, and I'm internal. So how really does that change anything? Just because I'm internal doesn't mean I'm dead. 
I still have an opinion. I guess that'd be my best answer for that. And again, you have uh, directors that sign on for multi-project deals with studios. It doesn't necessarily mean they lose their right to negotiate. In fact, it's common practice. You have a, you know, you want something, you ask for it in Hollywood, whether you've already agreed not to have it or not. I mean, it's all about value, and that's what we don't have right now. We don't have, we don't have that value. No one respects that value. And if you don't respect your value, and you're willing to sell out, and you're willing to sit down, and you're willing to not stand up. That's your right. That's your choice. But you're going to have to live with the consequences of that. Uh, like I said, I got called by the LA Times to ask me whether or not video games were an art form. I see. My answer, by the way, was, well, let's see. I hire artists from Hollywood Studios. I hire musicians who work on soundtracks and also work at Hollywood Studios. I invite, uh, hire creative directors that have worked within Hollywood. What they're working on in Hollywood is art. How is it that they lose their artistic talent when they walk in Naughty Dog's door? I don't get that. The bottom line is we've done a really bad job of putting ourselves out there as artists. And part of that is the fact that we're hiding behind a brand. EA is not going to be considered an artist. And that's part of the problem. They're hand in hand. The reason that no one is, is sees us as art is because no one sees us as artists. They don't see the names. They only see a giant body of companies making tons of product. And by the way, not being seen as an artist is very dangerous. I told the LA Times I understand why someone asked that question very clearly. Because if we're not art, we're not protected by a lot of free speech and other things. So we have to be very careful. If we're not seen as art, whoa, that's going to hurt us in the future for a lot of reasons. But it goes hand in hand. If the PR people aren't going out there and our publicists aren't going out there and pushing us as artists, we're not going to be considered art just because of the, of the content we create. Somebody's going to go out there and scream. Most people don't realize Jay Leno doesn't call people and say, would you be on my show? Okay, the dog talent, yes, but not the celebrities. The celebrities have publicists that pitch Jay Leno on having their celebrity get there so that they can pump the movie or whatever else there it is they're pumping. So if we're not trying to get out there, if we don't have people pushing us, they won't take us because they've got so many other people pushing content at them, people at them, that they've got a million things to do. They don't have time to go look in this corner of the world when we're not yelling back at them. So we need to yell out at them. We're not going to get on Leno tomorrow, but someday someone will. And it'll take a lot of phone calls before we get there. The question is, when are we going to start? I think this was an excellent talk and uh, very Thank excited. I, I'm very excited that you put this together. And I really hope it's going to be the beginning of a call to arms to make something like this happen. But the one thing I started to wonder about is contrasting Hollywood against something like the toy and game industry. If you look at board games, it is very rare for the designers to have their name end up anywhere except in the most niche markets. In fact, there's nothing more depressing than being in an awards ceremony uh, for toys and board games where the publishers come up and accept the awards for games. are in the too, you're right. But you do know who created uh, Dungeons and Dragons. That's true. So they have work to do too, potentially. Uh, I don't know enough about how board games are created to say who's doing the value in those in those companies. And this is a value question. As I said, there are industries where it makes perfect sense for PR and marketing to be the value. Uh, I don't know enough about board games to know how they're created. I really don't. And I'm not I'm not saying either way. I'm just saying I don't know enough. But if they're an industry like us, they got the same problem. And you're right. That doesn't mean that it can't change. It just means they have the same problem. I'm Dave Schuyler. I just wanted to publicly say thank you. You're welcome. Are you going to post your slides anywhere? Uh, yes, I'm going to post my slides somewhere. I have to go through it and figure out which pieces of Tara Reid I have the right to post. <laughs> so, so long as you don't view that as the value in the slides, I can just strip that out with a, this was Tara Reid in front of the Sony logo, and that I can post. Um, but in all honesty, I, I don't know how much of this uh, I can do. This slide is posted. So yes, I will. I don't know where. Uh, I would imagine that all of the dice uh, talks are posted. Is that correct, Doug? OK. One way or another, I will make sure these slides get out there. But you may not see much of Tara. Great stuff, Jason. Uh, with the gathering of developers and some of the other kind of independent developers that tried to come together and we get this rolling. They didn't succeed, they ended up getting bought by a publisher. What has to change to turn the point? That's the question. Right. I was hoping your question wasn't going to be, it's failed in the past, so can we ever succeed? Because a thousand failures doesn't mean there can't be a success. 
Uh, I also think the industry is changing now. The industry was very different when gathering and developers started. It was, in a sense, probably before its time. Uh, now that this industry has the ability to get money elsewhere, now that this industry is selling the units and selling, uh, now that developers are starting to stratify, stratify, I think, a little bit more, and there's been more years, we've seen more repetitive, uh, you know, repetitive quality gains and losses in, in certain groups, I think, I don't know, we've got to give it another try. And if we can get together and say, how did that fail, then I think that that would be, uh, that would be a good thing. For all of us. I don't think in the end that it was a failure. I think it was an idea before its time. So yeah, that's something we definitely have to look at. Why didn't it work? Maybe not enough developers. Maybe that's the problem. It's a big difference if two guys walk into the office and say, hey, our two companies aren't going to deal with this. It's another thing. Think about this. If every major developer says, we're part of this plan, man. We're all united. It's a very big difference. That's what we need. I just lay these walk over on the senior agent industry. Okay, I'm going to the agent that you talked about. And our job is not to do what they have to do today. It's not only to go and negotiate the deals. We're there to help you build your company. And we're also there to help you build the things that you want to do. So when Jason says we want to make you help you high profile for your vision or your company, that's what we do. And we end up. Your agents will land down and take my Jason says we don't use this, but we're there as an adjunct to help you guys successful. And we're not here to build our companies or our careers. We're here to help you guys be successful. And I think it's your future, it's, it's also probably worth saying that you know you, you ask a developer how do you make a game? And the answer is you go to a publisher and you get a contract. And I think in the future there are more opportunities than that. And we have been in the basement. The basement's now pretty nice, and they have elevators to get to them. But we have been in the basement for 20 years, and we need to get out. We need to say there are other opportunities out there for us, and there are people out there that are dealing with those opportunities and see them come and go continually. Um, were I not to have had the ability or the idea to get out there and get my name and my face in front of the industry, uh, and I had paid somebody a few percent of my net worth to get me out there, it would have been worth it. Maybe I got lucky, and maybe I did it all without help, without help. But if you think you're one of those people that can't do it without help, there's help out there, you know? And uh, a few percent, there's more than a few percent of the pie that hasn't been taken, that's my theory. And I think it's high time that we use that talent out there. Uh, I do not want to push anybody to do anything specific, and obviously you have to look at your business and what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. But I can tell you this, I don't know any agent that charges you to talk to them. So you might as well have a few meetings. No, we don't. So you might as well start. Um, Carl Schner, I'm with Microsoft. Um, one of the things I wonder about when I see people out there that are highly publicized, and Peter Molyneux, yourself, Dave Perry, you mentioned a bunch of people here, is how much time um, do you spend on that upward and outward effort? How much, how much time are you spending on that versus how much time are you working on, on games? Uh, the question should be, has my product suffered? And I don't believe that my product suffered. So if I'm spending a lot of time at it, which I don't believe to be the case, by the way, and my product's still good, then I think that that's irrelevant. And if Microsoft wouldn't take Jack 3, then I'm spending too much time. But if Microsoft would love to have Jack 3, my next product in their library, then I'm not spending enough time. That's my answer to that. And, by the way, my being out there, by the way, my being out there and my talking and my putting my face out there has helped Sony's sales of my game. And it has also helped the sales, I believe, because all of you know that I'm very vocal when, when the Xbox PlayStation uh, 2 era is starting, very vocally in support of PlayStation. I believe that there was a value there. I'm certainly not responsible for the PlayStation 2's victory, but I think there was a there was definitely some value there. Maybe it's even minor, but it costs nothing. So I think Sony got some value out of that too. And if you have a developer that's going around saying EA is the best publisher, I have a great relationship with them, which is what I say about Sony, by the way. I want to make that clear. I love Sony PD. And I think there's value there too, if the person has credibility. And FaceTime gets you credibility. 
So I guess that's a long answer to your question. That is my answer. My name is Greg Finesse. I work with Microsoft. And uh, my question involves the, the amount of emphasis you place on individual personalities um, as it pertains to uh, personalities out there in the public as the face of a developer <coughs> brand versus the developer brand itself, Yachty Dock versus Jason Rubin. A um, couple parts to that. One is um, who, if, if you do advocate having the individual personality be uh, the front man for the brand, uh, who should that be within the organization? Are you really talking about the, the lead game designers? Are you talking about the lead developers? Are you talking about the art people and, and, or, and so forth? And then what, how, how do you really view the relative benefit of those two? Um, is it really all about Castle Rock Entertainment developing you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Green Mile, or is it about Tom Hanks, or is it about the fact that it was directed by Steven Spielberg? Right. And if you can speak a little bit to that. That's two questions, and they're both good. One of them's excellent. Uh, the first question is the relative value of the uh, developer brand and the people. Uh, I'm a huge hypocrite because I've been one of those egalitarian, naughty dogs, the important thing guy when it comes to the credits. Go look at my credits. I don't tell you what everybody does, and that's dated. And I, I believe I was wrong. It was right for the time, but it's wrong now. Uh, so I believe that we do have to pick somebody uh, to be, well, the face. And maybe it's a few people to be the face. And we have to start saying, I love animators. I have some of the most talented animators, I think, in the industry. But the, the bottom line is they're not as important seat for seat as my senior game directors. I have to say that. That is a truth. And probably the first person in the industry to say that. If one of them quits and I get a phone call, I miss them, I love them, maybe they're a great animator, but there are other animators out there. If my senior game director quits, that's a tragedy. That's, that's, you won't see me for a month because it's, it's damage time. And that's a difference in value and we have to say that. So who is it? It's that person you can't miss without destroying the team. And yes, we're all different. We don't share that much information, so our structures are very different. Unlike Hollywood, where the structures are, are, are more similar. The Wachowski brothers are two people, yet they are one entity, in essence, the way they market them. I think that's a possibility. But we do have to figure out, and that is a good question, we do have to figure out who those people are in the organizations. And that may take some time to settle out, but we do need to start that process. The second question is the relative value of the developer brand to the person's name. And I say, long term, it's name. Lightstorm Entertainment, James Cameron. You may not even know those two are the same. There's reasons to have a company, and a company needs a name. And Lightstorm Entertainment, is, he likes that, right? It's cool, it's my name. But the bottom line is, they don't say, we're now here in an interview with Lightstorm Entertainment. Mr. Entertainment, would you like to tell us it's not like that? The value is in that person. It's James Cameron. And the people that work with him, if they're happy, are happy with that situation. And you ask my guys, sure, they'd all love publicity. Some of them are sitting in the audience and listening to me say this. But they accept the fact that, up until now, I've been the correct person to be out there. And that may not be the, the case in the future. And if I leave, somebody else will have to say, hey, this naughty dog that's still here has got value. And maybe more people should have been out there. But there is, there is somebody of value in each team. There's a lot of people of value. You've got to figure it out. And I guess that would be my answer. I'll take one last question because I'm over time. Um, well, I wanted to point out that uh, with somebody rising to being the, uh, the lead head person. What you're speaking to is going to hit a lot of uh, people on a development team, and a lot of them will consider themselves artists. A lot of them need to be recognized, even if it's only internally. And even if you don't have a star you're going to pick out and have them represent the company, it's really important to recognize your team as artists. And if you do pick out somebody to lead your company, I think it's also still very important to have them share in that and realize that. When a movie ends, it doesn't just list the director and the star. There is absolutely no doubt that that's the truth. Uh, I think if you go back and look at my interviews, up until 13 to 15 people, I named every one every interview, which started to get hard after 15 for the, for the journalists. Um, I asked, in fact, told my art director, who's sitting in the audience right now, Bob Raffi, that he should be here to receive the award if Jack wins the artistic awards, including Best Art Direction. I also want to I believe that in that. That wasn't the criticism. No, I understand. But I'm, sure that that I'm agreeing with you wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and they need to know that absolutely everybody in my company has value, otherwise they're not there. 
and I believe that. And if I do accept an award on behalf of the company, I will say I'm accepting the award on behalf of the company. It's the same thing in the Oscars. But the bottom line is, hundreds of people can't stand up there. So it's, yes, absolutely, I respect the people that work with me, no doubt. And I try the best I can to get them out there as well. Uh, I have right now in Japan my game director doing press. So in Japan, he's the face of Naughty Dog right now, uh, along with actually a lead programmer. So I do try to get them out there. And they do have value, and I do believe in that. But the, at the end of the day, if Business Week calls, there's got to be one person to give them. Because they only understand one person's stories, or two people's stories. They don't understand, hey, interview all 60 of us. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It worked at two or three. It worked at eight, but it doesn't work at 60, 65, 100, E18, 140. It's days of interviews. Um, thank you very much.